Hello, sixth graders. Welcome to Big Ideas Math, Contract Math, Section 1.5, Dividing Integers Lesson. Pause while you write Section 1.5 Lesson in your math notebook. Pause again while you write today's lesson objective in your math notebook. Today's objective is divide integers with same or different signs. Today we'll begin on page 30 of your math textbook and you need to start by copying these key ideas at the top of your page into your math notebook. It says dividing integers with the same sign. The quotient of two integers with the same sign is positive. And it gives you some examples there. 8 divided by 2 equals 4 and negative 8 divided by negative 2 equals 4. So I'm going to write off to the side the same kind of thing that I wrote with yesterday's lesson with multiplying integers. If you have an even number of negative signs, then your answer is going to be positive. If you have an odd number of negative signs, your answer is going to be negative. So this is just like multiplying integers where you divide exactly the same way you normally would and then you count up your negative signs. If it's even, your answer is positive. If it's odd, your answer is negative. And then the second part of your key ideas says dividing integers with different signs, the quotient of two integers with different signs is negative and it gives you some examples there. So copy those exactly as they appear into your math notebook. So now let's take a look at example one. We'll be dividing integers with the same sign. And our problem is to find negative 18 divided by negative 6. So we divide as normal. 18 divided by 6 equals 3. And since we have two negative signs, the quotient is positive, so our quotient is 3. And example 2, we'll be dividing integers with different signs. Letter A is 75 divided by negative 25, so 75 divided by 25 is 3. We have one negative sign, so 1 is an odd number, so the quotient is negative. And then we have 54 divided by 6, negative 54 divided by 6. 54 divided by 6 is 9. We have one negative sign, so our quotient is negative. So here are our answers down here at the bottom. Now let's look at example 3 where we're evaluating expressions and we have to remember to use our order of operations when we're evaluating an expression. So our expression is 10 minus x squared divided by y when x equals 8 and y equals negative 4. So our first step is to substitute 8 for x and negative 4 for y. So when we've done that, our new expression is 10. 10 minus 8 squared divided by negative 4. So our second step is to write 8 squared as repeated multiplication. So 10 minus 8 times 8 divided by negative 4 is what that's going to look like when it's all written out. And then we're going to multiply 8 and 8. So when we write that out, it looks like 10 minus 64 divided by negative 4. And then finally we are going to do some division and we're going to divide 64 and negative 4. So 64 and negative 4 have different signs. So it's a positive 64 divided by negative 4, so that gives us a negative 16. So 
our last step is to subtract. We have 10 minus a negative 16, so that results in a positive 26 when we're all done. That's a lot of steps, so you have to be sure you're using that order of operations, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, and division, and addition, and subtraction, and you're using that correctly all the way through and paying very close attention, doing one step at a time. Finally, let's take a look at example four, a real life application. It says you measure the height of the tide using support beams of a pier. Your measurements are shown in the picture and it asks what is the mean hourly change in the height. So the picture shows the pier with 59 inches at 2 p.m. and 8 inches at 8 p.m. And it asks us to use a model to solve the problem. So it gives us a formula. The mean hourly change equals the final height minus the initial height over the elapsed time. So it says substitute the elapsed time from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. is 6 hours, so we're going to put 6 hours on the bottom, and then it started out at 59 inches, so that's what we put in for the initial height, and it ended up at 8 inches, so that's what we put in for the final height. And then we subtract, so we, we put in, we subtract 8 minus 59, which is 51 inches. So we have negative 51 over 6, and then we finally divide. Negative 51 divided by 6 equals negative 8.5. So it says at the bottom of your page, the mean change in the height of the tide is negative 8.5 inches per hour. Your assignment for this lesson is to complete the On Your Own Problems 1 through 10 on pages 30 and 31 of your textbook or online textbook. They are also shown below. Show your work in your notebook, submit your answers in Google Classroom, and be prepared to share during our next class. Please remember, to earn credit for viewing this flipped lesson, you need to complete your exit slip back at the website. You also need to come to our next class prepared with the journal pages that we did during the flipped lesson or any other work that we did for the flipped lesson completed. You also need to be prepared with any work that was assigned in the flipped lesson completed and be ready with any questions you have for your teacher and, as always, have a good attitude. We'll see you tomorrow in class. Remember to earn credit for viewing this flipped lesson. You must complete your exit slip. You must come to our next class prepared with your journal pages or any other work that we did during the flipped lesson completed. And you need to be prepared with any work that was assigned during the flipped lesson completed. Be prepared with any questions you have about the content of the flipped lesson and a good attitude. We'll see you in class tomorrow.